my name is Kathleen Splain. I'm with the University of Delaware Cooperative Extension. My colleague Dan Severson is here. Dan is our ag agent. Um, just to get going on just our little PowerPoint of what we're actually going to talk about today. So just to give you an idea of the kind of things that we're going to talk about today, Dan has brought all his equipment. So he's going to talk about uh, the grinder and the stuffer. You're going to see him actually demonstrate those. Um, he's going to talk about um, cuts of meat that he uses, and um, he's going to make pork sausage. Um, you can use turkey as well, and we'll talk about that a little bit, um, because that seems to be very popular. One of the things I shared with Dan, Dan is definitely a pork sausage kind of guy, <laughs> and I'm a turkey sausage person. But I was telling him these uh, patties you see here in this picture um, you know, if I buy them in the grocery store, a package of eight of those patties is about $5. So by making the turkey sausage or the pork sausage at home, you could save a lot of money on, on these products. But he's going to talk about the steps to grinding it. He's going to talk about the seasoning. We're going to show the seasoning mix that he uses. And you all received a recipe for a make your own seasoning that came from Dan. Um, a recipe that um, he's used before. Um, in, in today's presentation, we're going to use some seasoning that is commercially produced. So they've got different options for that. And then um, he's going to actually show you how to stuff the casing and talk all about casing. And then um, just before we even start, so that we can finish with the PowerPoint and then go to the visual of actually presenting the program, um, we're going to talk a little bit about food safety and how important that is with anything you do in your own home as far as keeping your food safe for yourself and your family. Um, this uh, visual, Dan, do you want to talk about that or you want to talk about that? Well, we'll we talk go? about when we get the cuts of meat. Okay. Uh, so but pay attention to the, the butt, the top part of the shoulder, the Boston butt. Um, but just some food safety tips right off the bat. Um, we have four different concepts that we really concentrate when it concentrate on when it comes to food safety, um, clean, separate, uh, cook, and chill. And as far as cleaning, you know, of course, you want to start with a clean surface, clean tabletop, clean cutting boards, clean knives. You know, I think if nothing else in the last year, we've all really gotten good at washing our hands. So I probably don't even need to say that, but hand washing is really important before you start as well. And then separating in this picture, you can see we have some raw sausage and in the background, there's some onions and tomatoes. And we wanna make sure we keep those separate so that we're not cross contaminating uh, with raw meat and ready to eat foods. So really important concept as you're working through your kitchen. And then cooking, making sure you cook your products to the right temperature. If it's a pork sausage, you wanna use a meat thermometer and make sure it's 160 degrees Fahrenheit when it's finished. If it's a turkey sausage, you wanna cook that to 165 degrees. And then as soon as you're done with your uh, uh, sausage, making sure that you chill it promptly. You know, don't, maybe you have uh, on a Saturday morning, people get up at different times to eat breakfast. Really good idea to refrigerate that product after it's cooked um, and not leave it out at room temperature for too long. So just basic ideas there when it comes to food safety, just little reminders. All right, so uh, Dan has everything set up here at the end of the table, and he's gonna begin by showing you the ins and outs of the grinder there. Yeah, so um, what we have here is just a regular grinder. Grinder comes in different uh, sizes. This is like a 10, 12 grinder. I know most of you guys probably don't have a grinder at home, but they have, uh, what are those, kitchen aids, and they have a uh, little, apps that you can add to it so you can do a grind and the stuff on your kitchen aid also a food processor also works good um, if you get into some other kind of sausages some of them could just be rough cut sausages but this is just a grinder i'm just going to show you how to go ahead and put it together you know it's it's not too difficult but like i said some of you guys probably don't have one so don't fret but you know put in the corkscrew right your blade or your knife your blades go in then your plate, this is kind of a fine plate, like a 3 16th, but you can get different size plates depending on what texture or size chunks of meat you want in there, All right? And then I got my spacer, and then we're just gonna put this on, and we're gonna grind up some meat. Have you had this grinder a long time? Where did you get it? What was so, your, how did you? 
So uh, yes, I've had this grinder a long time. Um, actually bought it at an auction, oh, okay. a farmer's auction. Okay. So we went to a couple farmer's auctions, bought some stuff, went to a couple uh, Amish butcher shop sales and bought some equipment as well. So yeah, you can find these everywhere, auctions, farm auctions, but now everybody's getting into, you know, buy local, eat local, know your farmer, uh, eat off the land. So you can go to like Cabela's or Bass Pro Shops or any kind of store and you can find this kind of equipment. So it's kind of, it's kind of like canny, but it's with sausage. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to show you the cut of meat we use for pork. So on your, your handout, we're going to use the top shoulder. It's called the Boston butt because you go to the store and you're going to get a pork shoulder. You can get the butt or the picnic. Make sure you get the butt because the butt has the right meat to fat ratio that you're looking for and less bone than the picnic. Um, don't go to the store and say, you know, you get a ham because you think the ham's the butt because that's the butt part of the pig. You want the Boston butt, B-U-T-T. -T. So we're just going to go ahead and cut that up. I got one here. Um, you can go to your local store or your local farmer. And if you can see here, I don't know if you can see, but you can see the chunks of white. That's the fat. The reddish, the pinkest stuff is your meat. But it has the ratio that you, I find is perfect for a, a fresh sausage. Um, if you're doing deer and stuff, um, I would take and cut this up and, and grind this and add, uh, just say like, if you're going to do six or seven pounds of deer, add three or four pounds of pork to it. So like a 60, 30 or 60, 40, 70, 30 kind of thing. So you just could, all you gotta do is cut up your cube small enough to sit, fit down the neck of your grinder. Uh, actually a sharper knife is probably safer for you than a dollar knife. Yeah. So um, yeah, always kind of keep your, your equipment safe uh, and sharp. It's safer that way and dry. Um, what I try to do is when I work with meat is, or I was talking to Miss Kathleen, Dirty hand, clean hand. Always keep one clean hand, one dirty hand, because your dirty hand, when you're messing with meat, can get slippery. So I think we got enough here. We're going to do, I think, about a three pound sausage. Um, but anything that size will do. It, if you're working at home, you're going to have different times. Uh, three pounds might be a lot for a small family, three pounds might be nothing for a larger family. You can always freeze it too, right? So what you can do here is an option is you can start adding your spice to your grind as you go, or you can just grind it all, and then I'll show you what happens. But, so you just mine's on a foot pedal, so you just push it, and you'll see the pork start coming out. A little tip when you do this is what I like to do is I'll put my my, my uh, grinder parts in the freezer for about 10 minutes and I'll have the meat in the freezer for about 10, 15 minutes. So it's still kind of solid because you want your meat and your fat to be solid. You don't want it, the fat, if this generates a lot of heat, will smear your fat and then you'll lose the texture or you might get some off flavor. Idea. So I usually try to stick this into the freezer for 10 minutes prior to adding this. So, I'll just grind up what we have in here and give it to Miss Kathleen. She's going to talk about what we can do. Um, she mentioned the recipe. We're going to add that to that. Well, I take care of some house cleaning details. But so the recipe I got, if you ever want to get into making sausage, here's one of the best books. It's called, I don't know if you can see it. How, great sausage uh, recipes and, and meat curing by Ray. Ritukis, by Ritukis, is that how you say it? <laughs> it looks like that's how you say yeah. it. Yeah, so it's great. Uh, this is where I got the recipe for you. But today, I mean, when you start dealing with sausage and your recipes, you're dealing with a lot of different spices and this and that. And spices have a tendency to go bad if you don't use them fast enough. So we use a, I'm gonna use a pre-packaged uh, sausage mix that came from you know, big box store. How about that? <laughs> so, so you want to show them that package maybe? Yep. So, so this package can, can make up to um, 25 pounds of meat, but I do it out uh, a little bit at a time. And on the back, it will tell you like how many teaspoons or how many um, tablespoons you need, how much water you need per pound. 
And if you don't want to do it that by that, I do it by weight. You can divide, you know, to 25 pounds by the weight of the product and come out with like 15.25 grams per pound. But it'll tell you like use four and three quarter teaspoons of seasoning and one ounce of water for each pound of meat used. So this is um, this is a real nice convenience idea. Like Dan said, the spices they go bad. So getting your sausage uh, seasoning already made up is really a good idea. And this is the maple. We had a choice of sage or maple. Yep. And uh, we decided to do the maple. And I, we were just sitting waiting for the time to start the program. And um, the, uh, I could smell the nice spices, the <laughs> maple flavor. I'm like, that must be the maple because I wasn't sure which one he did. Yep. So he has charged me with putting together the seasoning and the and and the um, liquid that goes with this. So we're just going to sprinkle the seasoning on, right, yep. Dan? Like I said, I've never done this. You can before. do a dry rub to get it started. And then we're going to mix this up together. And I don't know about you, but I did wash my hands before we started. That's where I'm going but, now. <laughs> but just doing it with your hands is really—it's like making a meatloaf. You know, the, to get all the ingredients mixed in, you really need to just get in there and and mix it together. It's going to work a lot better than. Um, using a big spoon or something like that. And every time I turn this, I see more dry spices. So it takes quite a bit to get it mixed up and it's cold. Yes, we keep it cold. <laughs> and when we were talking about cuts of meat, uh, we were touched on turkey. Yeah. So uh, Miss Kathleen likes turkey. So you can do a turkey sausage. What I would re recommend if you're going to do turkey or chicken is try to mix the white and the dark meat together. Because uh, if you just do a regular white meat sausage, it has a tendency to be a little bit bland. It doesn't have the flavor. The darker meat tends to carry the flavor a little bit better. And just do it like you would normally do a sausage. Um, if you want a little bit of fat added to it, try adding some of the skin from the, the turkey or the chicken to it. And run all that through the grinder as well. So it is a, a good process, but... Um, what do you think? You think that's mixed enough? The so spices? The spices are good. So now what we want to do is as a little bit of binder, we're going to add some water to it. What I normally start out with is, is an ounce of water per pound of meat. So we got three pounds of meat. So we're going to add about three pounds or three, three ounces of water. We're going to mix it up as Miss Kathleen just squirts it all over yeah, the table. Right. <laughs> and uh, we lost some water. There. We're going to see what consistency or what texture she likes or how she wants it to feel. And then while she's doing that, this is our stuffer. All right. So this is a five pound stuffer. This stuffer will hold about basically five pounds, you know, three to five pounds of meat. Um, Depending on what size casing or what sausage you're making is what size horn you're going to use. This is a little horn, so we, you know we're going to do a, a breakfast sausage. Breakfast sausage, we're going to make it a little bit smaller. Um, I would probably add a little, water? little bit more water. And so this is pretty simple. It has a little release air vent up top. You know, it's just going to be able to crank it down, and we'll show you how to make links. But first, after we get it all mixed together, I think Miss Kathleen is going to show you how to make patties. Yeah, because um, I know. For me, I'm probably not going to go out and buy that piece of equipment to stuff yep. casings, but Dan's going to talk all about the casings and yes. all that good stuff too. What do you think? Does that look like that good looks consistency? Good. Yep. good consistency. Right. It's kind of tacky. It's kind of glistening in the light. It looks so good. for a patty, you think maybe that much? Uh, depends on how big you like Yeah, it. right. Exactly. So um, what Dan recommended is just take, a, take, the, pat, take the, the meat and roll it into a meatball first. And then pat it down. What do you think of that? That's kind of a petite patty. Yeah. But you could do them any size you want. Yeah, you could take them and you could just keep them, just make, you know, when you work with meat, sometimes it's good if you have wet hands. Yeah. But if you just make them as a ball like that, keep them as a ball. And then when you get them up to the grill, then you can push them down to the size you want. Make them whatever size you want. Right? So, yeah. Okay. So you're going to take the rest of this. So I'm going to throw some meat in here. Okay. And then I'm going to wash my hands. So I can get some some stuff in. So one one trick or tip I would give you is if you're going to do this and you don't usually make sausage, is when you make a batch, season it, get it to the texture of tackiness you want. Take a little bit and make a little patty and cook it. Taste it. See if you need to add something. Take something out. Add more meat. Add more spice. Do what you can, but uh, let me wash my hands real fast and then I'll get on. So I got the meat loaded. I'm just going to get it down. Like I said, there's an air relief valve here and hopefully you'll see this, but you'll see once I start, it'll start coming out. I want you to be able to see the, 
the casing for the so you can see it start moving out right i want to get it almost to the end because i don't want air in my sausage so then i back it off i'm going to grab Sorry. a little bit of water here so there's different kinds of casing. In case you can't see, it's about to right there. So what we're using is we're using natural casings. So these are casings made from uh, either sheep or pig. I got the sheep casing because um, this is a little bit smaller. They're, they're 18 to 21 millimeters. Hogs would be like 32, I think 35. Uh, and again, these are kept in a, a, like a salt brine solution. If you don't want to do that, they also have casings that are, are collagen or fibrous that you can use. So you can just use these. There's no added work to these. It could just go right on and go. With our wet casings or collagen or natural casings, I had to soak them in water for, uh, I rinsed them like five or six times and I soaked them in water prior to um, now. So they, they've been soaking for about uh, 30, 60 minutes. And what's cool about these now is they come in tubes. Before they used to come in a bundle and it was like trying to unravel Christmas lights and it was horrible. So I quit buying them and now they come out with these. And this is actually my first time using them. So, so before you take I'm excited. any further, when I buy, take this out of the package, it's got this plastic yep. liner. So the casing is wrapped, wrapped around, around it. Yep. Okay, gotcha. So what I normally do is I'll wet my horn. Right, even though that they've been casing have been soaking. So did this does this come in pieces like that, or did you cut this to this? No, nope, it, 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 now they come pre-made like this. Okay, so it came in that size piece. Yes. And those other ones you were talking about that you don't have to soak, they're in pieces too. Yes. Like they're not. Yeah. Okay. So once I can get this rolling, there we go. Oh, it's so thin you can hardly see it. Yeah, it, it's uh -huh. which is the point, right? Yes. These things we eat, and we have no idea. Right? Yes. <laughs> so you are transferring the casing from this piece of plastic onto, onto my your horn. horn. Yes. Okay. And so I could. And he also, um, Dan also had to bolt down his um, stuffer. Yes. So, so he has some vice grips there that he's attaching to the table. Otherwise, the um, stuffer would be flying off the table, right? So there we go. We got a little bit of casing, right? So what I normally do is once I get it on there, I take this in. Can you see that? My water thing in the way. I think my horn is a little too tight because my casing, sausage casings keeps ripping. That's why I say make sure you, you you put water on here because if it's too tight, it's it, so thin, right? Yep, it's very delicate. So I'll make a little loop there, right? And then, as you watch, I want to start cranking it. You'll see it come out. See? We'll have our little. See, you can see little air pockets start coming, but I'll show you something on that too. So we're just going to go around a little bit. And as you go, you can just, you know, make start making it into a little. Look, I just had a blowout, so don't let that happen. But that's what I'm saying. You gotta, that's where you tie it off, right? Yes. One thing about your mistakes with cooking, you get to eat them. <laughs> so we'll just keep going. Once you get get your rhythm, hopefully it works out. But, So like that, I got a little hole there. So if you're delicate enough, nope, it's gonna blow on you. Forget it. So we had some blowouts, but we got our sausage. So here's our lid. Oh, if you don't back off, it'll keep coming up. So here's our, we're gonna do sausage, right? How big is the breakfast sausage? Depends on how long you want. So your first one, be very careful. You, you spin it. That one kind of blew up, but. You spin it that way. And then your second one, you want to spin it the opposite direction. So make a take your fingers and make a little hole. And then you want to spin this one the opposite direction. Right? So then you have your two little saucers link. And again, this guy, he already blew up on us. So we're going to turn him into a little third one. So we, we have 
a couple little sausages here. We can go ahead and take this guy. We're gonna spin him this way, right? And then down here, we're gonna spin him the opposite way. And when we're done, if you look, we have, some great little sausage links that you can enjoy with your family on a beautiful day to go along with. And if you have some blowouts, like I said, there you go. Patties, right? Yep, make your little meatballs, <laughs> put it down there. You go even, to with the the, even with the casing mixed in, that's fine, right? Yeah, that's yeah. edible casing. You don't have to worry about the casings. They're yeah. edible and all that stuff. Yep, even with the fiber or these casings, uh, these are, you can eat those as well. I usually, don't, I usually peel them off, but you can eat them as well. Yeah. So, um, and if you have a lot of air pockets in your sausage, if you're going to cook sometimes, I got a little sausage three prong thing. I go ahead and get all the little air pockets out. So everything like the air pocket doesn't burst or, but yeah. You can use a knife too. If you, you can, can have that yeah, tool, if you right? don't have that, you can just take the back of your knife. Again, this is where it's nice to have a little sharp knife and you can right. just go down. Yeah. Yep. They look good. So um, we talked about turkey sausage, mm -hmm. the exact same thing. And um, so, you know, really, I would think making your own turkey sausage would be much more economical than buying a boxed turkey sausage. It just seems like the turkey is so much more expensive than the pork. Yes. Yeah, so the, boss, the butt portion is usually a little bit more expensive than the picnic portion. Of the shoulder because you're getting less bone with the with the Boston the butt um, it has a better flavor and I, I don't know what price of turkeys are but I think I picked up this for a dollar fifty four pound for a butt and it was right around eight pounds so if I can get uh, ten pounds so if I get eight pounds of sausage on it of any flavor I want. Um, you can get different flavors. You can get breakfast. These are fresh sausages. You can also get um, spices and cures to make jerky, um, trail bologna, Lebanon bologna, stuff like that. But yeah, that's, uh, again, you can use any kind of meat for sausage. It's just uh, make sure you have some kind of fat or flavor with it. Yeah, because um, Dan and I were both looking up turkey sausage recipes. And um, his motto is he would add bacon fat yeah. to the turkey sausage to make it taste better. <laughs> yeah, I would have taken the white meat and dark meat mixed it together, but I would have thrown some bacon probably in there. And you make your own bacon too, right? Yes, you, uh, you can order, you can get kits that you can do a dry uh, rub for bacon or you can do a liquid brine with bacon as well. Yeah, so even when I, when I, I would like when I make sausage, even fresh sausage, like after we made the mix, I would probably put it back in the fridge and let it rest for about a half hour. Let all this, those spices and everything marry together. So with meat, with, with um, smoking meat, I would do the exact, exact same thing. I would mix it one day. I would get it stuffed in the tubes one day and, and let it rest in the fridge for another day. And then I would bring it back out the following day and I would put fans on it or something to dry it out. I want that, that outer, outer side of that sausage to be dry. So when you put it into the smokehouse, that the smoke will absorb and it will attach to that case. So yeah, make sure your sausage is dry. Uh, make sure you don't get your temperatures too hot when you smoke it because then you'll just get crumbly and your, your fat pockets will disappear. So keep everything, you know, yeah, but keep, get it dry and, and gradually raise your temp and your smoke. I would run it probably for about Ooh, a half hour to an hour without any smoke, just to get, make sure I got everything dry with my vents open. And then once I start to smoke, maybe I'll start pulling the dampers down to keep some of the smoke in the chamber. Okay. It looks easy enough if you have the right equipment yeah. and uh, <laughs> the right uh, right tools to do it. Uh, yeah. So. And it, it's fun. I mean, it, it you learn, you can learn math, Learn where your food comes from. Your kids will like it. I mean, you can take to your needs. You can tell it to your needs, your taste, your spice. So yeah. Yeah, I like the. I, I think I like the idea of the patties. Well, thank you, everybody. Hopefully, you learned some. I mean, to me, it looked nice and simple. 
Yeah, the worst part after you guys are gone is cleaning it up. <laughs> you don't want to stick around for that. I don't yeah. Think, so, all right. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, okay. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Right. Good job. Bye.